Hey guys, quick little update, pun intended, because it is about the DJI HDFPV goggles update. We're now on the third official update that they uh, released. It's 100200, really lovely naming scheme. Uh, and the major, there's two major parts. Uh, one side I'll disappoint you greatly because I'm not really uh, dealing with analog stuff at all, but supposedly it records, uh, which is amazing to me that they actually have enough processing power to do the analog to digital conversion so they can record on the DVR the analog feed. They also fixed a few glitches like the, the OSD was showing the brightness and contrast. So that should be gone. I have no idea about the quality of the input or the recording. Uh, I'm not gonna investigate because I don't use these goggles uh, for, um, for analog at all. I have still my uh, analog goggles for racing. So uh, I'm not gonna be using these. They, supposedly they addressed the latency, the performance. So I guess that's the, the little lag that the uh, analog uh, input has. Sorry, can't help you with that stuff. Um, but I did test the other big part of this, which is the OSD. So now they're claiming to have 24 things you can put on the OSD. So what you do is in the goggles, you can have, uh, there's a setting called uh, custom OSD or something like that that you enable. And then you can use the better flight configurator to uh, enable a few parameters or the variables that you can use. Uh, I've tested the current uh, sensors, so you can have the, the, the amps that are being consumed, you can have the uh, amp hours uh, counter, which is also quite useful. So if you have a current sensor working, just enable it and it's gonna work. You can position it using the configurator UI and everything seems to be working fine. There's also things like the RSSI that works. The link quality did not for me. And then there's the very uh, important thing and that's the GPS. So they claim GPS is working. It is, there's a few parameters that I was able to get working, which is the number of satellites that you have a lock on and uh, the position. So you get the latitude and longitude that can be overlaid on the OSD. But useful things like the speed or the home location, I just couldn't get to work. So I don't know if it's coming, there's some like graphical elements on the OSD that, that work, like the little satellite icon, and they got all, so, so technically the, the arrow pointing to home location shouldn't be a problem, but it just doesn't work, so I don't know about that. So you may think, okay, so they don't have the, the home location arrow or the compass or anything, uh, but at least you have the GPS position so you can later recall it in the uh, DVR and perhaps if you crashed, locate your drone. Sadly, I got more bad news. Uh, the really nice uh, metadata saving that they introduced in the last update where there's a sidecar file, SRT file that includes all the metadata uh, only includes those that were there previously. None of the stuff that comes from Betaflight is being stored. Uh, so nor do the latitude, longitude. Um, you can't, it's not just on the OSD when you're playing back in the goggles, but also in the file itself. I looked and it's still the same stuff in there. So that's a big bummer. There's also a few things uh, about the radio. The radio now uh, is able to act as a joystick, so you can use it on the simulators, which is something that I think is great because like new newcomers can buy the system and be able to train before they wreck their uh, drones. Um, there's uh, something about ability to set frame rate and bit rate uh, for longer ranges. So if, when you go over one kilometer, I haven't seen where you actually 
supposed to be able to tweak that. So I'll uh, get back on you, uh, get back to you once I figure it out. Otherwise, there's a few bug fixes, but I think this video is long enough. So um, I'm actually happy to see DJI pushing these changes and I'll see you in the next video when I got more information. Take care guys.